You are listening to another episode of the Enrich Innovation Station podcast, an initiative of Buy Enrich in Brazil and CONFAP that highlights the priorities and mutual challenges of research, development, and innovation between the European Union and Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome everyone to this new podcast of the Rich Innovation Station, an initiative of Enrich in Brazil and the Brazilian National Council of State Founding Agencies, CONFAP. The objective is to highlight mutual priorities and challenges for the European Union and Brazil in research and innovation. I'm Kevo Kautin, President of the Association of Foreign Correspondents in Brazil, and I have the pleasure and the honor of presenting this podcast. Today we want to talk about a very important, very interesting, and I think I would say very extremely current topic, both in Brazil and also the European suffers. Mainly is the preventing and fighting will fires. Remembering this is the podcast number 11. So I would like to analyze this very topical issue with our guest, Mr. Pablo Perzilana, policy officer at the Research and Innovation at European Commission in Brussels. Thank you for being with us, Mr. Ilana. Thank you very much to you for this opportunity. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado. And then we have Professor Marcio Pereira, President of the State Funding Agency of Mato Grosso do Sul, FUNECT. Welcome, Professor Pereira, and thank you for being with us. Thank you. I'm here today to talk about so much important things here and uh, what happens here in Brazil, what happens in Europe. Thank you for you all. Thank you very much. So let's start with Mr. Ilana. I wanted to ask, first of all, to present the impact on climate, environment, and uh, population generated by extreme wildfires, respectively in, in Europe, uh, of course. And then we will talk about Brazil with Professor Pereira. But uh, first of all, let's start about uh, the climate, environmental, and population uh, generated by the extreme wildfires. And I want to outline the main actions and plan implemented uh, on the European side. Please, Mr. Villano. Thank you. Indeed, large-scale and more intense wildfires are becoming an increasing concern in the European Union. We see that more and more Europeans suffer directly and indirectly from wildfires. Between 2017 and 2020, fires have killed hundreds of persons and ravaged forests and nature protection areas that we call in, in Europe uh, Nature 2000 sites. And this has been happening not only in Southern Europe, as uh, used to be the case, but also increasingly in Central, Eastern and Northern Europe, for instance, in, in Sweden in the last years as well. In addition to the extraordinary socioeconomic impact in terms of loss of human lives of residents and of first responders, there are issues also related to health, infrastructures, economic activity with huge losses, but these stream well fire events have also serious and sometimes irreversible ecological impacts when considered soil degradation, water scarcity, and biodiversity loss. Moreover, and this is maybe sometimes not so obvious, but wildfires are among the first contributors to climate change. There are different studies, some even point to an amount of even 23% of the total global greenhouse gas emissions per year in the last years. And, and furthermore, the, the large surfaces burned cannot absorb so much CO2 any longer, so reducing the climate change mitigation potential of carbon sinks. Extreme fires are now observed even more frequently in higher altitudes and latitudes, and this further contributes to accelerating climate change by increased black carbon fallout on ice, snow, and by melting uh, underlying permafrost. And these are issues, for instance, in subarctic areas that are also quite worrying in addition. But on the top of that, large wildfires degrade air quality through the direct emission of toxic pollutants, affecting first responders, local residents, while populations in regions far away from the wildfires can be also exposed to these pollutants as the air is transported, and this has a short and long-term impact on human health. So all in all, uh, climate change, certain forestry practices, ecosystem degradation, and rural depopulation in Europe increase the depth and breadth of wildfires in the European Union. According to some studies from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, which is called the PESETA-4 studies, climate change is predicted to increase fire risk with longer fire seasons, more frequent fire events, new fire-prone regions, and more severe fire behavior. 
Um, just to give you some figures, the burned area in southern Europe during the 21st century would sharply increase. The number of people living near wildland and exposed to high to extreme fire danger levels for at least 10 days per year would grow by 15 million with a scenario of three degrees Celsius warming, so compared to, to the current situation. And furthermore, global warming could result in a substantial shift northwards of European ecological domains, so making the recovery or reestablishment of non-adaptive ecosystems more difficult after a fire. So all in all, we see is that extreme wildfire events as in Southern Europe in 2017, 2018, or in California, Brazil, Australia in 2019, and more recently, so are likely to become common throughout the whole Europe in, in the future. So this is kind of, uh, in, in a nutshell, okay, the, what we saw the worrying impacts on climate, environment, and populations. And regarding the main action on plans implemented, okay, there are from different angles, of course, a lot of actions at the European Union. I will focus in the area of research and innovation. As you know, in line with the new priority of the Commission, the Green Deal, that explicitly calls for, to reduce the incident and extent of forest fires and to boost the European Union's ability to predict and manage environmental disasters as a immediate priority, we have opened a very substantial call for proposals in research and innovation. And uh, this call for proposals includes a dedicated topic. Actually, the first call topic is precisely about preventing and fighting extreme wildfires with integration and demonstration of innovative means. So this is a very holistic approach that I think that we are will um, maybe explain further on, on on the possibilities to cooperate with Brazil, but is trying to tackle all the fire management phases with all the different means, but with an emphasis on demonstration on pilot sites. So taking a stock of the research already conducted and advancing it further to demonstrate it to provide real solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Milano. And I would like to ask the same question to Professor Pereira, of course, on Brazilian side, on Brazilian point of view. So uh, I would like to Professor Pereira to present the impacts on climate, environment, and population generated by extreme wildfires. And I will ask to outline uh, the main actions and plans implemented. Please, Professor Pereira. Yes, first of all, uh, I'm here to bring the points of view, sometimes the government, sometimes the researchers. But here is a point of view of someone who is working on an agency and who provides uh, funding for researchers to solve this problem that's happening in Brazil. It's now a problem, of course. We have problems uh, in the Amazon rainforest, we have problems in the wetland here, the tropical wetland in the center of Brazil called Pantanal. And my question, my problem is how to solve, how to bring some solutions how to bring a scientific solution and understand what has happened around these parts of the, the country, in the north and the center, and uh, how this fire impacts the lives of the people that live there. And, uh, I talk about the uh, animals, uh, wildlife, uh, talking about the people who survive and live and work economically in that area. And that's a cultural problem. So many problems to solve. This point of view of who is funding who has certain uh, solutions to this problem. The first of all, there is a problem, of course, and uh, it's a question on the two sides. First, climate change. It's uh, for the first time here to talk, talk about the center of Brazil, the region of Pantanal. It's really different from what happened and all the time. We are talking about something significantly very different from what happened in other years. So, of course, I have to prepare some, for some kind of uh, problems, but it was uh, it's really surprised, take, take as, as a surprise to see such huge problem. For the first time, this uh, fire is uh, almost uncontrolled and they have to work together here in the state. Talk about here in the state of Mato Grosso Sul in the center of Brazil, have to work together with all the states with some some partners, some all the society, all the all the, all the society working together to prevent and to solve and to stop that kind of that, that fire. And uh, now we, we we did Amazon rainforest. I'm not talking as a specialist, but of course there are problems there that impact the economic, that impact the the communities and. In the point of view of us, the New York and now together to organize ourselves, ourselves and make some actions for our first action here is, of course, research. Only by research, only by science, we can understand what happened and what we can do to solve and prevention. And this prevention 
we make us understand the last year. Of course, we don't expect that it will happen again. We don't want more than to expect the kind of a tragic problem that we face, but we have to be prepared to face some problems on last year and all those years. We are expecting to have some problems less on all oh, 10 years of problems, of course, but we have now we are more prepared to understand the problems itself and working to solve it and prevent. The point of the government, of my, our government, we understand the problem and we are bringing more money to solve this problem and we expect that the resources will help us to understand and make it possible to prevent such a problem. That's the point of view of someone who is working on the leader of this agent who fund is funding a research. So first, there's a problem. It's real. Your view, it can cost the lives of uh, the animals, cost some problems of the forests, and now we're here and there to understand and to bring solutions. That's our proposal, and uh, we have to do a lot. We're going to talk about Europe, Brazil, there are some, the huge, some differences. So in Brazil, we're talking about biodiversity. The, our biodiversity is so different in, in each area, in each state, each moment, it's a kind of biodiversity. So that's you know, not so, so easy to tackle, we understand, but uh, we have so scientists who have working on, on each area and to solve this problem. Thank you very much, Professor Pereira. And please follow the sponsor of this initiative on Twitter at ConfapBR and at Enrich underline Brazil. So I'd like to continue with Professor Pereira in, in order to talk about this very important topic, how the European Union and Brazil cooperation may be an asset in order to tackle jointly extreme wildfires events. Please, Professor Pereira. First of all, work together can face all this problem here. Versus so just face together all the institutions, all the states, and the government and uh, the society itself. We can first can can tackle this problem. All institutions work together, and to face this problem, how you know, we are working here uh, to organize ourselves, organize our, our some of the research, uh, some fundings to face all this problem. There's a lot of things to do. Not uh, just in the beginning, we have we have some specialists for this problem, and we will work together to solve it. And cooperation. Of course, cooperation in Europe is very important. Just work together, not, not only in Brazil, working together with Europe and, and it will help us, of course, to understand better and uh, enhance the problem of prevention. So we will do it, that's we need to work together, that's cooperation is the only way to solve problems. We need some, some knowledge there, here, and all minds work together, not, not questioning if it's uh, to blame someone or not. Oh, it's your blame. No, it's not the question now. Question now, that's it. We have a problem. We, we have to cooperate here in Brazil with each other. And of course, we must cooperate, of course, at Europe. And we need this, of course, this cooperation, this knowledge. And some parts can work and learn together. Of course, we can, our research can tell the European research how to work and, and how to understand the problem there. And of course, you need another point of view here. How can some things you cannot see easily? Maybe it's the chance, not of course, it's the chance, the chance to cooperate. And uh, we are thankful that we have this chance now. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Professor Padina. And of course, the same question also to Mr. Ilana. So, how the European Union and Brazil could cooperate in order to take on jointly these extreme events? Please, Mr. Ilana. Thank you. In fact, we have now a golden opportunity to collaborate in the area of research and innovation thanks to this European Green Deal call in Horizon 2020 with this the first topic on, on preventing and fighting extreme wildfires. Because on um, this call for proposals is, remains open till the 26th of January and um, it's encouraging international cooperation and Brazil is one of the countries explicitly mentioned. In fact, um, from from the European Union side, we are devoting 75 million euros of funding for European participants. And we are very glad to, to hear, to learn that uh, CONFAP, some of the states are also in Brazil, um, mobilizing resources for Brazilian participants to come together with Europeans. So I think that's a very positive development. And this um, call for proposals, you, you can see uh, on the website, very in detail, uh, all the opportunities, but there are many different areas where we have common needs and we have also kind of synergies to benefit from each other capacities. And the approach of this um, call for proposals is actually a holistic one in the sense of trying to address all the fire management phases. So this means to that the, the proposals should include 
activities addressing all these phases. So from prevention and preparedness to detection and response and up to restoration and adaptation, the whole cycle of the fire management. Uh, what we expect actually is to see this acceleration of activities. So it should not be just research, it should be also demonstration and preparing the deployment of innovative means and methods tailored to the stream wildfire behavior. So this, of course, can include uh, better and more advanced techniques, models, solutions, capabilities for addressing all, all these phases I mentioned before and to mitigate the impact of, of wildfires. It's also holistic, not only in the sense of addressing all the phases, but this holistic approach also uh, integrating all the different contributors to solutions. So we, we see that there should be hand in hand the technological aspects with the sociological, economical aspects and environmental aspects. And it's very, very important to put also emphasis on proactive governance, change of forest management practices, large scale and community based risk assessment, awareness and preparedness, where citizens, local communities, the forestry and bioeconomic sectors play a central role. And all this on the top, of course, of the very important technological aspects. If we look also from this perspective, a very integrated approach addressing all the potential means and this is from the very top from for instance space capabilities in terms of observation in terms of support for communication for navigation and would you know in the european union we have these fantastic flagships and um, projects as copernicus for earth observation and galileo for uh, navigation and that's that can be instrumental actually both in the prevention but also in the detection and, and, and response for for the first responders to act efficiently so that's a layer the layer of respect but also then if you go a bit farther you have aerial means and in the air in aerial means there are a lot of also capabilities we can improve from the traditional ones of firefighting aircraft but also the newer ones like drones and um, different water bombers you know the operational constraints sometimes we see in firefighting are, are really amazing in terms, of course, of safety. So it's a very, very dangerous activity. So we see pilots operating in conditions harsh, and we see also, for instance, limitations in night operations. So for instance, night operations could be enhanced or could be facilitated with uh, the demonstration of new um, technology advancements that we have seen already in other domains. So this is just to give you another example. So that's from the aerial perspective. If we go farther down, of course, on the ground, the, the first Respondents, there is a lot that can be done for them to operate more safely, to coordinate better all the different activities, all the different actors, including also when needed on, on search and evacuation, on warning the citizens that um, are under threat of these issues. So this, all these are so another aspect uh, that can be tackled. So these are just a few to name. And what we want to see is basically that the proposals should take into account the state of the art and the previous research and innovation activities that have been conducted. At least at EU level, there have been a number of projects, uh, but we want to see a higher level of maturation, of, of cooperation among the, the relevant projects and to make best use of existing initiatives so that we, we are closer to facilitate the deployment. For that, it's crucial the involvement of end users. So we want to see the end users really engage the different sectors and the different authorities and communities. That's, again, an integrated approach that is needed for solving the real issues. It should not be a silo approach, but it should be an integrated approach. And for that, we count also on, again, all member states of European Union, the associated countries to Horizon Europe, but also international partners such as Brazil and other countries that are facing the common needs and also have substantial capabilities to, to complement. So all in all, I th we think that um, with this call, we, we are looking forward to see very robust, very, let's say, promising uh, proposals that if selected after a few years can really provide solutions almost ready to be taken up by the end users. And uh, on this respect, uh, I can say from the European Union side, you know, we, we have a number also of uh, initiatives and uh, of entities that are operational in the case of uh, wildfires, uh, like the Director General ECHO in the European Commission and the, for instance, the, the what is the Union Civil Mechanism for Protection 
So the Union Civil Protection Mechanism, as you may know, this rescue, it's very, very relevant. So that would be fantastic that the solutions from these projects can be then applied and taken up by this kind of mechanism for, for the benefit of all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ilanas. Unfortunately, our time is over. I have a dozen of questions also actually to ask to our dear guest, but for this podcast, we have to finish the registration. I would like to thank all our guests for being with us, in particular, Mr. Penasilana, Professor Marcio Pereira. Thank you very much for this invitation. I'm here to work and together with you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Muito obrigado. Thank you for being with us. I cannot fail to thank our sponsors who allow the realization of this podcast, in particular, the delegation of the European Union here in Brazil, also the CONFAPI, and all our sponsor CNE is a very important work in order to improve the dialogue between Brasilia and Brussels in the field of research and development. And thank you for joining us on this podcast, and I will see you on our next podcast here on Enrich Innovation Station. Goodbye, and see you soon.